All right, welcome back, Art World. We are coming to you from downtown LA, and I have my co-host, Miss Art World, with me. What's up? Hello, Lisa. How are you? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and we have an awesome guest with us today. We have Tomar Peretz. Perez. Perez. Oh man! It's all right. That's fun. <laughs> Peretz. I got so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be. It's okay. Nobody actually. There is no one can pronounce it right on first time so okay. don't worry about it thank you <laughs> i appreciate it all right so dive we on in are, well i love to talk about where we are in the podcast so we're in your studio um and you have a studio mate that you share the space with but it's huge this is the best studio i've been in like ever oh, wow this is that's a big thing to hear. It's huge. I, I think you saw our jaws drop when we walked in because, like, usually we see like a 10 by 10 space when we go to artist studios. Really? Yeah. Wow, go, okay. It's a closet. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the ceilings are high, you have big windows, skylights, like, and your work is big, so I can understand why you picked the space because it really fits your work and kind of this freedom that you probably have with working. Yeah, I think uh, I even see my work in a different way in a bigger space than um, a smaller space. Before the studio, I used to have, uh, well, I used to paint in my two-car garage, the same wow. sizes as you see right now, and it was really hard um, uh, to capture and see my work in my two-car garage. So I just, you know, I, 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 I knew I had to get into a big space. Uh, in order to create and, and, and bigger scales and, and to keep, you know, and doing what I do, but bigger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like every artist starts off in the garage. Yeah, so it seems like uh, a common denominator. <laughs> uh, actually, the garage was not the start. I, I started in the kitchen. Oh, the kitchen? And, <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs> I, I, I used to live in a very tiny loft and the only space I had and everything was carpet and I didn't want to paint on a carpet. So I painted on the kitchen because the kitchen was the only part with like a linoleum floor. So uh, yeah, that was, I think, um, um, when I started professionally painting on um, in the kitchen and then bedroom and then two car garage and then the studio. (laughs) studio. So you're only moving up in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the type of progression artists dream of right there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought about this book. That's actually <laughs> what I'm talking to you right now. Yeah. Kitchen, bedroom, <laughs> Yeah. Interesting. So you have a very interesting history. Do you want to talk about where you're from and how you got to L.A.? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Um... I was born and raised in Israel, in uh, South East Jerusalem, which is very authentic uh, um, and interesting place in Jerusalem. I um, finished high school, went to the army. I was uh, at the army four and a half years, which mandatory is three years. I uh, volunteered a year and a half more. I was an officer. Um, finished my army time and went to travel in South America for almost a year. Um, came to LA, which it, Los Angeles was supposed to be just, just a station between uh, the South, South America and India. Like I wanted to travel to the east side of the world. But um, two weeks after I arrived to LA, I just decided to stay here and, and um, I, right away start to, well I, I was painting also in South America and I was painting even when I was very very young but in South America I, I did some few murals and when I arrived to LA I just bought a few canvases started to paint fell in love with Los Angeles and never used my ticket to India oh my wow. god yeah, I'm still here <laughs> so you literally have a ticket to India yeah it was uh, it was um, I was supposed to go from LAX to Kiev, from Kiev to Bombay, if I'm not, yeah, Bombay. Um, that was the route, and I never used that. Actually, a few months ago, I, I traveled to India for the first time. 
after so many years, it was my dream to go there. <laughs> but um, finally made it. I'm, I'm yeah, glad yeah. you came back. <laughs> yeah, and I, I came back. Yeah, I didn't I didn't get stuck over there. <laughs> what was it about LA that just kind of spoke to you? You know what? I have no idea because I didn't really meet too many people. Um, maybe it was. I think I got tired from traveling and I wanted to get settled and LA was, I don't know, I felt comfortable here. I felt like I can really pursue, um, well, it's not that I had dreams, seriously. I didn't come here with dreams to be someone, but um, I, I just felt comfortable here and I, don't know, I just didn't want to leave this place. It, it's kind of hard to explain why. Mm -hmm. It just felt right. Yeah, it felt right. Um, didn't mean too many people in the beginning, uh, but um, I, I had really good energy and and wanted to settle here. Um, by the time I met more people and more of them, and then obviously um, it was a great decision. Were you pretty focused on art when you came here, or did you start to focus more on your art once you were here? Um, I was always focusing on art. I w art was always in my mind, but obviously I didn't make money out of it and I and I, I had to eat and pay rent and pay this, this and this. So I had different jobs. Um, I'm very <clears throat> realistic um, person. So every job I had, I took it very seriously. So um, I did some sales and, and, and I was not, I was always thinking art and I was always doing art, but I knew that if I really want to move forward, I needed to make some money. So I, I made money from, from different things and, and sales and stuff like that. And that really gave me the, um, um, the abilities to push my art and to buy new materials and to try new things. Uh, because I, I didn't go to art school, never. I never went to... Uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. so I, I, I felt that I, I had to try different things in order to um, um, to sell my, my work. So, uh, yeah, that's so, you know, I had different jobs, obviously. Yeah. Were they jobs that related to art in some way or just completely Some different? of them, yes. I was mm -hmm. working for a designer and I was working for an architect. I was managing... Um, a, a gallery in, in, in LA and then I was managing a gallery in Vegas and some of them yes and some of them not you know I I, I, I found jobs that I knew I could be good at and I just did everything I could to make money and push myself because the goal was only art but I was always got stuck because I wanted to travel, I wanted to go to buy a camera, I wanted to um, uh, go different places, and I needed the money, obviously. And I didn't want to obviously live in the street and <laughs> paint. And yeah. I, I, I did not believe in this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I wanted to. I didn't want to paint from pressure. I was always wanted to paint from from uh, a relief, and I didn't want to have pressure in my life. I have that same philosophy. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be a poor artist. I, I'll make money doing the day job and then have fun with my art and just not worry about sales or anything like that. Just enjoy it for what it is. Yeah, and, and, and I was always about to choose my work and to choose my the style of art I want to do. And um, I'm not going to lie to you. Many, many I took many commissions and many jobs that I didn't like, but... I, I always was aiming not to do it, and I was always dreaming not to do it. I was always about to do my own stuff. And you know what? For an artist to do something he doesn't want to do for, for the, and doing that only for the money, this is, this is the biggest struggle. This, this, is, this is so hard for me. Like I cannot give you, even if you can commission me um, to paint something that I'm not really into, and I will do it for the money, you will never get a hundred percent from me, and 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 that's not me. This is not my style. I don't like if if I give something for myself, I want to give a hundred fifty percent, not sixty. 
that's got to be so tough to yeah. take those commissions. But do you I, have that a lot where people come to you? Because you have a, a certain style that I'm sure people would recognize. Do you have people that come to you with a completely different commission? Of that course. They, yeah. Really? Everybody that has. shocks me so much. Of course. But, but hey, you know, you know what? Not everybody understand that I don't paint fish in the water. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that could be really cool if you it's really your style and it's unique. But I, I, I don't do it. I, I, I don't know how. And I don't really, it's not really, I'm not into it. I'm not interested in paint ocean. Mm-hmm. It, you know what? I tried and it was so horrible. And I, and I just <laughs> gave, it, gave up on it because, which I love the ocean. Yeah. But I'm not into painting the ocean. Like it, 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 it's, it's not what I do. And so absolutely. And I took some of them and, and. I'm not. I don't want to tell you how much I cast <laughs> when I was painting. You know, I was, and it didn't work. And I tried again and again and again. And then you start to hate your job. You, you, you know, and then it's become a job. Mm-hmm. You know, and you don't want it to become a job. You want it just to be fun. I want to paint faces, and that's what I'm really into. And I want to choose the faces I paint. So anyway, but. Um, I think it's very difficult to paint something that you don't like to paint. Going off that though, I think that's something that we love so much about your work is you can tell that you do know the people in your paintings and that you have that connection with them. And even as we walked through your space, you described your connection. I think that's so important. It makes the artwork so much more meaningful and powerful. And I think that's something a lot of emerging artists aren't doing. They're finding pictures online and not finding that connection. That was, so we, not to hate on anyone we've interviewed, sorry everybody, but that's one of our critiques when we interview people who do portraits and we say, well, where, what's the process? How do you pick the people that you're painting? And they literally say, oh, I Google and find images that speak to us. And then when you talk about, no, no, I need to have this connection. I need to have chemistry. I spend time with them that makes the artwork that we're looking at so much more exciting. Yeah. But I gotta be honest with you, I started mm-hmm. as Googling people, yeah. Yeah. but I lost interest. Okay, first of all, I'm a very impatient person. Mm-hmm. I don't have patience. So, <laughs> and I realized that if I Google someone and for a commission, for myself, whatever, I Google a face and I start to paint that, I cannot spend enough time on the painting and because because painting requires a time in order to get somewhere in order to get to your destination because when when I start a painting I have something like a picture in my mind technically like technical wise where do I want to get and what story I want to tell so it's very hard to tell a story when you google someone's mm-hmm. face okay and it's very hard for me technically to see it on the face and paint it for so many hours. So I got into photography and, and started to take my own photos, uh, I would say seven years ago, not too long ago. Um, I started to take my own photos and I just, I, I, I can't, I can't Google face anymore. I cannot do it. I, 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 I feel so um, bad doing that because First of all, where is the story? Like, what are you trying to tell? What are you trying to uh, show? And but you know what? It's got so complicated because I cannot even paint people that I'm not really. I don't really feel something to them. And when I even get commission, I intend to meet the people. And, and if I need to even take photos. I sit with them for hours and hours and, and sometimes I don't even take the photos and I tell them, hey, you know what, we're not going to take photos today. Let's keep talking. And, talk. and sometimes people don't get it, but I really need to feel something. And I need, Because, hey, look, at, I'm going to look at that painting and that face for so many hours, for so many days. And I'm going to think about it. I'm going to dream about it. I'm, it's going to be here in my mind for such a long time. I have to have a connection. I have to have a story. I have to have something um, in order to keep working on it. And, and 
obviously I want to, I, my art is, is, is my language, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'd rather not to talk because then you'll have to put a lot of filters, but, but I'll be very, <laughs> try, I'll, I'll try to be very uh, cool today, but let's put it that way. You don't want me to talk. <laughs> you want me to paint. So, so in order, in order to no, um, don't filter yourself. This is explicit. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> um, in order to, um, if if I really want to talk in my way, I need to have the connection. I, I need to take the photo. I need to be with a person. I need to know the person as much as possible. And you saw you saw Alejandro, and I went all the way down to Mexico. To be with him for one week I was on he is right now one of the main character in uh, Narcos so I was with him in the set I was with him with his grandma with his family for days just and and he was like we're good friends but sometimes he didn't really understand I'm like dude do whatever you want to do and I'm your ghost like I'm gonna be just behind you because I just want to fill his life mm -hmm. And that's why I can sit on three portraits for one year. And I still, I'm, I'm so hungry to even bring more of it. Same thing with Joseph. Joseph, it's a two years process. And only then, you know, I can get into his bathroom and his shower and take photos and draw again and more. I have 12 pieces over there that I did with Joseph, but I have to have very, very deep connection I think it's a, a process of a growth of an artist. I think some artists that Google faces, um, maybe it's just a progress. Maybe they're just starting like that. Maybe if they will get into different way on capturing the right faces, mm -hmm. they will find something very interesting about themselves as well. They will maybe their, their technique will get much better. Maybe their, their art, and the story will be much better. Again, it's, it's very individual, I think. But about myself, I have to have very, very deep connection with the object. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important. I think you're really, I think you're right about it being progression. And those who we have heard it from are truly emerging artists, whereas you are well-established and a professional in the field. And so... One thing that I find interesting, you say you're impatient, and I think maybe um, I've struggled this with this with my own art is with social media, with Instagram, I always feel like I have to produce very quickly to keep that audience interested in my work, where when you spend a year on a painting or two years on um, building a piece, um, do you ever feel that kind of pressure that you have to produce quickly or are you just, hey, this is my process and Instagram or social media is a secondary thing that you're not going to worry about? It's a great question. Um, no. I don't feel pressure uh, from the audience, I will feel pressure only from commercial work if I have a deadline. If I don't have a deadline, no pressure at all. And I obviously want to finish it. Like I want to finish my paintings, but, um, and I think that if I'll have more patience, I will get to much better results. And I'm working on it. It's a big challenge I have. Um, but my pressure doesn't come from the audience or Instagram. It, it, it comes more from myself. Like, like okay, because I have all, so many ideas. Mm -hmm. And beside Alejandro, there were so many other people I want to paint. But yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm with Alejandro. <laughs> I'm still with Alejandro yeah. and Joseph. And I have so many artists I've met and so many interesting people that I want to bring on a canvas. But I, I, I want to you know I, I can't work on 20 different pieces so I'm working on six seven at the same time but more than that it just will be way too much I think so I want to finish it I want to get to a point that I'm very satisfied with um, um, with uh, what the painting shows with the actual story as far as uh, the, the story and as far as technical and so that's that's 
that's why I'm impatient because I have so much that I want to tell, so much that I want to show. And, and no, it's got nothing to do with it, audience or Instagram. I have a lot of pieces that I don't even show on mm -hmm. social media that, that I really like, but I don't, you know, I don't really show them. How much commercial work are you doing each year um, in comparison to your own? Is it like a 50-50 split or? Wow. Um, it, it varies. It varies. Um, sometimes when I'm really into my own work, I don't take commission. Mm -hmm. um, I had right now three months that I was like, I don't want to take anything. I, I wanted to finish uh, Joseph and I wanted to, sh to, to finish Alejandro. So I didn't take any commission. Then I got back to it. So it varies. Sometimes it could be 90 10 and sometimes it could be 10 90. So yeah. it varies. Okay. It's really depend on my inspiration. Okay. So we've had a lot of questions about doing commissions. Um, have you had any issues with commissions in the past, not getting paid, or do you have any hard and fast rules to always make sure it works out? Um, probably not now you are you get to know them really well, but maybe in your earlier times? Never had an issue. Really? Amazing. Never. Well, one I, I don't even call it issue, but one time I painted something for a very interesting lady, and she just didn't like it, and I just, okay, don't yeah. take it, don't pay that's it done and it, it was not even an issue mm -hmm. it was it was like okay whatever like you don't like it, you don't like it yeah obviously at the moment you're like ah. yeah you know you get it in your stomach but you get over it you know we hey, hey you, you have to you have to keep going you can't yeah. get stuck <laughs> on it you know so someone didn't like your painting yeah big deal you know uh, so your work, um, we're, I'm looking at a few of your canvases that have a curve to it. Um, and I, I think I was also reading on your artist statement that you were talking about how you play with a lot of different mediums and techniques. Um, can you talk a little bit about this experimentation in your work? Yeah. Um, I like to try different things always. And... Um, I remember a few years ago, I went to Best Buy to buy a TV and I saw the curved TV. I'm like, that's so cool. I got to make a canvas like that. And when I got into it, I, I, I changed it a little bit and I, and I did only the, the corner and this and what you see right now, this is what I did. And it was really cool. And I started to paint on it. And I like that. I, I like it the fact that I got out of the flat canvas. Um, like I can paint on sculptures, I can paint on anything, I don't mind, but I, I mostly paint on canvas and I got kind of tired of the canvases, Let me, I, I wanted to try something else. Um, I got into, I did a lot of pieces and it's funny, it, it was, and I sold uh, a lot of pieces, but it became very hard to um, carry and to keep it, you know, in good shape. Um, I ruined by mistake a few pieces. Um, when I sh when we shipped even a few pieces to clients, it got ruined. So it, it, it gave me gave me a headache. So I I got back to the canvas, but I still paint on curved. But I'm not only on it. Mm -hmm. It's not the only thing. But I always try different mediums. Just I like spray paint and that that kind of stuff or just oil painting um mostly oil then acrylic no spray paint um uh, sharpie pencil charcoal but yeah i would say 70 percent of my work is oil mm. even 80 80 yeah. percent <laughs> 80 percent okay. yeah. I love that though. I love walking through your studio and seeing the mixed media and the photography and the oil and the deconstruction and it's so cool to see you play with so many different things but they all tie in so well. Um, yes, I don't like to see it. Maybe <laughs> you like to see it. I don't like to see it because it, it shows like 
different work and, and different stories. And it, it's very hard to understand the story right now because there is so much different things, um, so many different, different type of work. Um, but if I would get ready, <laughs> I didn't get ready um, for someone to come and show a specific story, I will avoid ev everything else and leave only one collection for mm -hmm. you. It's much easier to tell a story if, if it's more minimal and you don't show other work and other stories and other from from different years. Yeah, it's cool, you know, it's cool because you see you see like how like my abilities, my technical abilities, you know, which it can be cool. But if we're talking right now about let's talk about a story, mm -hmm. well, I was really behind this collection. I think it will confuse you to see other work. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Uh, so Joseph mm -hmm. is a musician. Um, and it seems like you get a lot of inspiration from music or musicians. Um, and you have LA Art Agency. C can you talk about that? Those were like three different questions in one. Uh, can you talk about your relationship to music and then maybe circle back with the LA Art Agency? So, LA Art Agency not exists anymore. Um, I was very involved with um, a different artist and I started to get commission and different offers to do some work that I don't do or even I don't even know how to do and I started to bring the client bring the right artist to be the middleman and at the beginning I used to just gave the work to some other artists but then I'm like you know what wait 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 maybe 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 we can create some business here and and I I, I was a middleman for a bunch of different projects but it took so much of my time and I stopped doing this and I just like I stopped creating business out of it and now I'm just giving the work and and I just really don't have a time to deal with that because as a middleman sometimes you take responsibility so I had a lot of issues sometimes when artists did not provide for the client which is really not my way so and I didn't want to take responsibility on different artists so I just left it um, Joseph, it's a whole different thing. And I was always like musicians and, and other artists, not just musicians, but even dancers or, or writers or actors or producers or, or um, uh, designers, fashion designers, any, any other art form. Um, maybe because I wanted even to be one of them. I, I, you know, I wanted to, you know, to design houses. I wanted to design clothing, but... I'm not gonna do that because I'm very focused on what I do right now and I don't have the time even to learn it and I don't think I'll be good at that right now. So I think just like when, when I paint them and when I um, uh, take photos of them or when I document them and, and I create with them, I feel like I'm one of them. So um, Joseph is the, big, the biggest um, um, biggest project I've ever done on one artist. It was, um, I'm sorry, 16 different pieces and all two and a half years long. And yeah, and, and oh, by the way, we didn't stop. We, we are still continuing, like we still, I'm still creating about Joseph. And it just, it's just amazing. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, the progress and to go with them to concerts and and to meet other musicians and um, it just makes the progress really fun you know when it's not just one painting on one person I feel like I live I, I, I not live his life because I'm not trying to live somebody else's mm -hmm. life but um, I like I can taste from his life and that's really cool yeah that's really it's fun. like you've walked a day in his shoes What's that? It's like you've walked a day in his shoes. Like, yeah, you, you know, it's like it's it. like to go with him to a concert with my camera mm -hmm. and to take photos when he leaves his house 
to the actual venue, to the backstage, to the stage, right after the stage, to the bar, <laughs> to his house. It, it's like you really understand how uh, um, a working musician lives and it's really fun. It's really, really, really fun. Yeah. And you create about that and, and, and then we hang out and then and then you meet another musician, then you go with the other musician. So I, I, I think it's, it just makes the Pogas a lot more interesting. And by the way, that the, the outcome of the work is, is insane because you, you, you're so into it. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And you said he's become one of your closest friends through this project? Yeah, we talk like four times a day. That's awesome. It's, uh, <laughs> It's insane, and he's he's uh, showing right now. He has a concert in Israel, and then in London, and then he's coming back to Woodstock. He's going to be showing in Woodstock, uh, in New York, in uh, August, with his wife, Minette, and um, I'm going to be with them. I'm That's going awesome. to I'm going right now to Israel to see them. So, it's 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 become part of my life right now, uh, Joseph. So, and it started as just one painting, and just got bigger and bigger and bigger and we had a huge uh show here on march at the opening we had 600 people coming over we oh expected gosh. only 100 people we had a line of like 150 people outside it's it, it just insane we we it just got bigger and bigger and bigger and and i think that's because we were so connected to each other everything came out much better than google how, how yeah. did you meet him? What was that first meeting like? Well, I knew him because he was a, he's a famous musician from Israel. So I, I obviously knew his face. He was playing with the best bands in Israel. And um, a mutual friend one time told me, Tomer, you know, you need to meet uh, Joseph. And we met, we talked, art. And boom, that's it. Like you met just random person. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, I think that's very interesting. Um, so, the people that you paint, do you, are they ever um, not intimidated, but maybe intimidated by their by seeing themselves presented through your art? Some of them, yeah. 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 <laughs> Some of them, yes. Like Alejandro. He's very embarrassed. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because he's like, you know, he's he's embarrassed. Like he's Tomer. Like, you know, you're painting me on fifty foot canvas. <laughs> my, like that's my face is huge. <laughs> yeah, you know, and he's very he's he's an actor, but he's very humble person. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he's okay with that, but. He's not gonna come to my studio and do a story of his face. He's not. He's not gonna do it. Yeah. He's he's very embarrassed. But <laughs> that, I think that what makes it more interesting, you know, that he's not really um, proud of it and sharing every story mm -hmm. I create. You know, I I I like to see it, and I'm proud of it. But but I'm proud of the fact that he's not proud of it. Yeah. He like I know he loves that, and he will show you on his phone. Like he'll go, to, he'll show you on his phone, but he will not share it. He yeah. will feel kind of like, you know, he, he, he likes to be the, the, the humble person. Mm -hmm. He's enjoying from being a humble and not showing his face all over, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I like it about him. Yeah. Is that a um, project that you want to keep secret or can we talk about the concept behind his face? There is no secrets. I don't know <laughs> if, you know, I'm, I'm painted at such yeah. a huge scale, so obviously it's not a secret. Yeah. Um, do you want me to talk about yes, this? Yes, please. Um, yeah, I, uh, Alejandro and I, we've met like eight years ago in, in his beginning of, his beginning of the, his career. And, I painted him in some uh, hotel that I was invited to paint live in some hotel in uh, La Petite Hermitage, actually, in uh, Hollywood. Really cool event, and I had so much fun. The owner invited me, and we 
became really good friends. And he told me, listen, we're going to have um, a Charlie Chaplin over there. So you're going to paint Charlie Chaplin. Anyway, long story short, I painted uh, Charlie Chaplin actually was Alejandro. He, oh. Yeah, he and Buddy at Charlie Chaplin. Oh, wow. That's how we met eight years ago. Okay. By the time he, he obviously, his career got much better, da, da, da. He invited me to watch one of his, um, one of his uh, sh- uh, movies. Uh, it was Feliz Navidad Tijuana. It was um, a Mexican movie, very cool one. But before it was a premiere, and before the movie, they showed um, another short film that he was also the main character. And the movie called El Bus. And crazy movie. And the movie is basically about a person who is giving up about everything he has, about his family, he's giving up his family, he's giving up his job, everything, and killing himself. And I think giving up is my biggest fear. And two minutes after the movie started, I started crying. And my friends and everybody was, and my wife was, were, were looking at me, it's like, dude, are you, like, why are you crying? This movie is weird. Like, you guys don't get it. The guy is giving up. It was like, okay, he's giving up. But I was, maybe catch me in a very mm-hmm. sensitive time and in a moment. But I couldn't sleep the same night. I couldn't even stop thinking about that movie and about this guy giving up. And obviously, it's my biggest fear. I'm, uh, I don't like to give up. And um, right away after the movie, I texted Alejandro tomorrow at my studio. Don't even say no. Five o'clock p.m. <laughs> it's funny. He showed up in my studio with the guy who made the movie, and he didn't even know oh what, my gosh. like, what is about. So it was all connected. Yeah. And Harry, the guy who made the movie, came over to my studio as well, and I, I had tears in my eyes. I'm like, "Did you make that movie?" It was like, yeah. "I'm like, oh man." So I think that movie really touched me. Um, uh, and I just decided to paint Alejandro crying, but I want to have the process of the crying, like how you know w- w- when you have that feeling that you're about to cry, and mm-hmm. you about, like you feel that stomach and in your throat, like you about to and you try to hide it and you try not to cry, but then you explode. Mm-hmm. So the these are the actual portraits, like when you right before, right, two seconds before you are exploding and everything, all the tears are coming out, yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> and we were speaking before, I love these pieces because it's something that everyone can connect to because we've all had that moment of the crying about to bubble up and that emotion. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd be concerned if someone did it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, it just, it just yeah, crying, it's, it's a very normal feeling. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to expose it, and and I was I felt very connected to it. So obviously, crying it's it's I think it's very normal. Yeah. And sometimes it's even good to cry. You know, mm-hmm. it releases a lot of things you have. Yeah. <laughs> and I think at least our culture doesn't usually feel comfortable seeing men cry or like letting men cry. And I think with the size of your work and just kind of this ownership that men have this emotion that I think is very powerful. At least maybe as a woman, but yeah, I, I, would I agree. have two brothers and it was, I was allowed to cry and if they cried, it was showing weakness. I gotta be honest, it's the first time that I hear it from a, from, from a lady. Really? really? Yeah. yeah, because I think so too. Yeah. I think there is something about a father that is crying. And he was a father in his movie. And it was a time at the movie that he was taking a shower and the water stopped. No more water because obviously they didn't pay the bills. And he's like, and his son was in the room and his wife was in the room and he would start uh, yeah, like yelling their names. Like there was no water and he would start crying. And then, as a father, I have three kids, and I'm like, dude, what would I do if I'm not gonna have, you know, enough money to provide to my kids? I start crying at that moment, and and I think, I I, I so agree with you. Maybe it sounds bad, but you know what? 
it is true when a father when a man father crying and he sees tears it there's a little bit different emotion here because you're not expecting that because as a father you're always trying to be in control you cannot show you cannot show emotions you know you don't want to show to your kids that you're crying and this and I really agree with you and it's the first time that I hear it from a lady usually from guys guys usually see it saying that but um, yeah you, you, you actually got it interesting what what do you what's your goal for this work would it go into a gallery I, I don't know I'm, I'm, no I don't know I don't <laughs> when I paint something I don't even think where it's gonna go I paint because I want to say something and I want to say something to as many people as possible. So if it will be sitting on a roof and everybody will look at that, I'm cool with that. If it will be sitting on in a basement and everybody will look at that, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. Gallery, museum, there is no goal. Um, there is, uh, well, I'm sorry, there is a goal, which the goal is many people should see it. And, as, and I want to share my story with as many people as possible. And if the gallery will reach my goal, it will be in the gallery, I guess. Mm -hmm. So um, it's the gallery is just a, 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 um, a part of the progress. Mm -hmm. It's not the main goal. And you've done murals before. Do you do them still or? It's part of um, <clears throat> commercial work, yes, mm -hmm. commission. Do you enjoy those? as much as the canvas pieces? <laughs> Sometimes. Oh. <laughs> um, well, look, at, if I could have a wall that I could do whatever I want, I will enjoy it more mm -hmm. than right now. And yeah, you know, I, I got paid to do murals per request of the owner of the building or the property and i obviously not going to do stuff i'm not into at all but it's usually with directions you know they, they they direct you they're afraid because of people the businesses a bad mural and and the wrong message to them i guess can damage a lot of business and i totally respect and i understand that but there's many things i wouldn't do but it's not fully my choice, the exact image, not fully 100% my choice. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned you're married with three kids. Yes. Um, and so one thing we've talked a lot about is with being an artist, um, it's your passion. So it's so easy to lose yourself in your artwork and spend hours in your studio. How do you manage that family work-life balance when your work is your passion and your love? Um... I think there is no difference between someone who is coming up with a new startup mm -hmm. and an artist. Because someone who's coming up with a new startup always spending so many hours in his office or bedroom or whatever. Um, what do you mean? You, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. It's, it's, it's part of life. You know, I'm, I'm an artist and I'm a father as well. And I think I'm first of all a father, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I was first an artist, but yeah. then I became a father, and I, I totally understand my responsibility. Do you and set hours on yourself? Like, all right, 6 p.m., I got to go home. Um, this is the challenge. Yeah. Yes. It's not easy because sometimes you're so in the mojo, mm -hmm. and you're so into the painting, but then, boom, you got to go help, you know, to put the kids. But uh, you know what? It's a challenge, but it's not my biggest challenge because my wife is really understand me mm -hmm. and she knows me as an artist and and she knew what she's getting yeah. into. <laughs> um, she's no very, 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 very supportive, very, very understanding. Um, so I, it's a challenge, but not my biggest challenge. Yeah. And I think if it's really your biggest challenge, something need to get fixed yeah yeah you cannot suffer hey if you do art well art can come from suffering but when you work on that it, it i think pressure is not good like you have to you know be relaxed and if you have pressure from someone 
client, wife, brother, friend. I, I think you need to figure out how to avoid it, to mm -hmm. avoid that. So. I was curious, um, so you had mentioned at the very beginning that you don't have any art schooling at all, um, but your technique is amazing. So was that just from trial and error? Did you take any classes, study under anybody to kind of bring your art technique to what it is today? I took two, five classes with two different uh, teachers. Um, the first two, and it helped, <clears throat> but, um, I rather bring a friend who paint with a different technique and to paint together with him and to pick up some from him and he will pick up some from myself. And I rather doing this than sitting in a class with a teacher. Um, because when you're sitting with a in, in a professional class, you mostly gonna do what he's gonna ask for me to do. Like, for example, okay, I was in a class, I, I, was, I was trying to, he, he was really good teacher, he was really good painter, he was really good artist, but he brought the models. And you know what, I, I, I was looking at a model, I'm like, dude, that guy is not interesting at all. Like, I don't <laughs> wanna paint that guy, yeah. I feel nothing here. But you're like, I class. need to talk to him first. <laughs> you're like, excuse me, model. Can we have a discussion? <laughs> Let's chat. <laughs> yeah, you know. But, so, so I, I left. Like I did two mm -hmm. classes. I, I, you know, I tried to yeah. come again, but then it was a different model, and she was really, you know what? She talked a lot, and about topics that I was not interested. She talked to other some other painters I, I don't know I just didn't feel it you know yeah. I, I, I don't know I have problems with schooling I was always have a problem with schooling I, I, I need my space so I rather I guess learning from mm -hmm. different artists that I meet I yeah. think that's very interesting um, and I don't think we've talked about it is having that where you invite another artist and then you learn from them and it's this kind of live painting exchange of painting technique. I think that's really interesting. Oh, I do it a lot here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I invite a lot of artists to paint in my studio and we learn from each other. This is, this is I really, I'm really into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm into inviting different artists that I really like their technique and their stories and their style and, 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 you know, yeah, inviting them to my studio. This is something I do on a weekly basis, by the way. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, so when you're, I'm just curious. So when you invite someone into your studio, do you set up canvases kind of like no. right next to each other? No. no. <laughs> no. Come like on chat? over, buddy. <laughs> no, first of all, come, let's, just chill let's talk yeah. a little bit you know um i usually invite people that i've met already mm -hmm. before i don't i don't really invite a lot of people online you know? yeah like tinder for art you know <laughs> <Yeah>. um, um, <laughs> I, I, I i rather to like even if i met them online i rather to have some kind of conversation mm -hmm. you know and then I invite them, and, and usually I already paint, and then they bring their own, and they paint, and uh, we have to have the connection before. Yeah. So if we have the connection before, everything is natural, everything happening. But I don't set canvases here. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. No painting date. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of like, it would be really cool to invite someone over to do a live painting, but then I feel like there's an anxiety, 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 because I'd be like, do we have to like paint next to each other? And you like would stress out about it time. so much. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I could do it, but I really like the idea that you can. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't mind. I can paint yeah. in front of a lot of people. Um, I can talk even during when I, when I'm painting. Wow. I feel very comfortable mm -hmm. doing uh, uh, paint life. 
Do you have any um, shows coming up or um, events or anything that is? Um, I, I have a few pieces in uh, Milan, in Italy, in a gallery. It's called La Fabrica Eos. And there is something uh, it's a, with other artists on, uh, that, that are showing in this gallery. Uh, by the way, this is the Wikipedia. This yeah, so I printed old. it out. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody update that. I was like, oh, we have a Wikipedia page. I'm impressed. <laughs> um, so I have in Milan something on the end of June. Uh, it's small. So if you are in Milan, I would love to see you. And uh, in the studio, I had I have nothing coming now soon. I had actually on March 27. I had the show with uh, Joseph. Um, um, no, I'm actually about to going to travel right now for uh, for a while. So nothing is really nothing big is coming up. But hey, you know what? I'm I'm very spontaneous. Yeah. So am I gonna get an invite next week for something that I ain't even thinking about <laughs> right yeah. now? Um, but nothing big is coming now mm -hmm. here in LA. We'll keep us posted because we'll continue to post down the road oh, yeah. and we'll come and yeah. For and sure. uh, I forgot to do this at the beginning, but if someone's wanting to see your artwork, where what's the best place to go to see it? So my website is in well, I have a website. It's online right now. It's still it's up, but um, there is so many things that are not updated. Um, my website is about. I hope, and I hope the developer is listening right now. <laughs> um, I, I hope to finish it by uh, the end of the month. And if not, maybe in a few weeks, my new website, which is going to have a lot of new stuff. Um, all of my recent work, all of my, uh, uh, my artwork that is not even paintings that, that I've done in the past uh, few years that I've never showed before. Um, so beside on waiting to my new website, you can check on my Instagram, uh, which is uh, Tomer Parrot's Art. Um, I know it will be hard for you to understand what's the spelling. We will, <laughs> we will tag you and we will make cool. it easy. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, Instagram and, 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 um, and Facebook maybe also, but I don't really post a lot on Facebook, but yeah. you can see some stuff over there too. Mm -hmm. And actually uh, come over to my studio if you want, you know. Um, um, you can always send me an email and we do some studio visits like once to two weeks. Um, and you can come and see what's up on the walls. Awesome. Um, and just before we close out, do you have any advice to emerging artists on, you know, things to do to be successful in this area or... This is such a big question. Um, <laughs> Lisa's favorite question. Before we end this, let me ask you the biggest, hardest question ever. <laughs> Go. That's not a hard question. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, uh, I, it, I think it depends. What is your goal? Like, what, what, where, where, where are you trying? What, what's your destination? Like, where, where, where are you trying to get? Um. So. I have many suggestions, but, but it really depends what are you trying to achieve yeah. and what are you trying to say out of your uh, work. But if you can really know yourself and get connected with yourself and be real and really honest with yourself and look at the mirror and see everything clear and not to lie yourself, you'll be a better artist. Um, I cannot say that I'm 100% there. Nobody's really 100% there, but this is my goals, and it's what I'm really trying to achieve, like to really get to know myself. Um, and once you know yourself and you're very connected to yourself, uh, I think your art will get much better. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much yes. for coming on our podcast yeah. we appreciate it oh yeah for sure thank yeah. you this was amazing thank you so much thank you thank you all right oh, oh. lisa
This oh, is your cue. This is my cue. Uh, hey oh, guys, don't okay. forget to hey. follow us on. I'm just. I was delaying. Go ahead. Go All ahead. right, guys. We have a hotline now, so you can call us and uh, you can leave us questions, and um, we will answer if they're good. So it is two o two six four two arts. Do it so one more time. Two o two six four two two seven eight seven. Perfect. All right. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.